Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Vikas Nera, and in today's video, we will discuss how to install Zimbra 10 on Ubuntu. The latest version of Zimbra is version 10. We will install it on your Ubuntu system. In this video, I'll show you which VPS you'll need and how to configure your domain. We will configure the domain here, set up any necessary records in Cloudflare, and I'll provide all the commands we'll use in this video step by step. You'll find the link to these instructions in the video description. I have already obtained my VPS. Let me show you where to get the best VPS at the most affordable price. You'll need a VPS with sufficient RAM as the requirement is 8GB. If you purchase 8GB RAM from other providers, the pricing will be significantly higher. Look here, you can get whatever specifications you need. This configuration will work well, and if you want to set up multiple email accounts, this low-cost option with 8GB RAM will suffice. If you encounter any errors here, simply reload the page. Then select Ubuntu as your operating system. In this video, we're installing Zimbra 10 on Ubuntu. After selecting your plan, click here and choose the region for your IP address. Leave the other settings as default, then proceed to the OS selection. Select Ubuntu 20.04.2 and either generate a root password or enter a strong password manually. Then proceed to the next step. Fill in all the required information and click next to complete your purchase. You'll need to get your VPS from here, and you can purchase your domain from GoDaddy. After acquiring these two things, note that Zimbra 10 isn't free, you'll need a trial license. To obtain this, click on this link. When you click this link, you'll see this page. Click on, get a trial license. A form will appear like this. I'll fill it out to show you the process. Enter your business email ID, you can use a Gmail address. Fill in your business details and click on Get Trial License. After submitting the request, you'll receive the license in your email shortly. Within one or two minutes, you'll receive an email with your license key. Now that you have everything ready, let's proceed step by step. First, I'll open the PuTTY software. And log into my VPS. I'll enter the credentials here, copy the password, accept the login, save it, paste the password, and click OK to open the terminal. Next, we need to set up our DNS records. Let's navigate to the DNS settings. Once you're here, you'll need to create records and copy your IP address. I've created a section here called DNS records. You'll need to add all these DNS records accordingly. I created this record, click add slash edit, save it, and add another record for www subdomain. I've created four records here, one for the main domain, one with www, one for the mail subdomain, and another for the mail subdomain with www. Now we need to create an MX record. Add a new record, select MX type, enter the name, and add mail.yourdomain. Copy your domain, enter mail.yourdomain, set the priority to 10, and save. Next, add the txt record for SPF. Select txt record type, enter the details, and replace the placeholder with your IP address. Replace your IP address here and enter it directly, then click save. After that, you need to create a mark record. Copy this format and create another txt record. Under name, enter underscore mark and click save. The first command you need to run is this one you copy, paste it here, and press enter. You'll see this output appear, then press enter. 
This will update and upgrade your system, which is necessary whenever you install Ubuntu or any other OS. The update is almost complete, and I'll also show you that my license has arrived in the temporary email. Open this email and you'll find your license key. After the update is complete, scroll down and select your time zone. I'll enter this and verify it. If it shows invalid, let's set the time zone according to your installation time. After that, proceed with the next step. Next, we need to set the host name. I'll copy and paste this command, then enter your domain. I'll enter my domain here and copy this command again to paste it. Your host name has been set. When you run the hostname command again, you'll see mail.yourdomain. Now we need to edit the host's file. Type this command, copy and paste it here, and press enter. We need to add this line here. I'll paste it first, then replace your domain and IP address. Press Ctrl plus X, type Y, and press Enter to save the file. After this, you can reboot the system. When I run the reboot command, the system will restart immediately and I'll close the connection. After the system has restarted, open the terminal again. Next, type this command, cd slash opt. This will take you to the opt directory. Now copy this command which will download the latest version of Zimbra to your server. I'll paste it here and press enter. This is downloading the latest version of Zimbra for Ubuntu 20. After the download completes, run this command to extract the tar file. The file is being extracted. After extraction is complete, navigate into the extracted folder. When I run the ls command, you'll see the created folder. Use the cd command to enter it. Then run this installation command. I've entered the command. Type y and press enter when prompted, then y again. During package installation, you'll see these prompts. Select no for DNS cache and yes for the other options. Select yes for LDAP, logger, MTA, no for DNS cache, yes for SNMP, spell checker, and all other options. Type Y to continue and press enter. After completing these steps, you'll see this output. When you continue, you'll see this screen. It will ask if you want to change your domain name. Type Y, press enter, enter your main domain name, and press enter again. The system will check your DNS settings. If DNS records aren't found, select option 1 and press enter. Everything is set here. Let's set the time zone, type 7 and press enter. For Kolkata, it's 67, so press enter. The time zone is set. Now return to the main menu by typing R. When you press this, you'll return to the previous menu. Now select option 4. All settings are configured here. You can adjust them if needed. Type R to return to the main menu, and I'll show you the main things to configure. First, select option 6 to edit the admin password and license settings. You'll see the screen where you can set the admin password. Make sure to set the admin password. Type 4 and press enter. I'll set the password here, you can enter your own password for login. 
Press enter when done. There are two options here, 4 and 25. Select 25 for the license configuration. It indicates that you need the license during installation. Type 1 and press enter. Enter your license key here. I'll copy and paste the license key I received via email and press enter. The license is now active. Type R to return to the main menu. Type A to apply changes, press enter, then type Y and press enter. Type A again, then Y, press enter twice, and type Y to continue. After typing Y and pressing enter, the installation will begin. All your configured settings will be applied. Upon completion, you'll see this screen. Enter your credentials, and Zimbra has been installed. To access the admin panel, use this URL. Enter your domain here. I'll copy and paste my domain. To access the admin panel or web panel, simply enter your subdomain, and it will open. If you open it in a private tab, click on Advanced and then click Proceed to continue. Your Zimbra admin dashboard will then open for login. The login email is admin at your domain and use the password you set earlier during configuration. To access the admin webmail, simply enter your domain without the port number. You'll see the services status here. Click on service status. After clicking service status, refresh the page to properly display all services. Let me clear this and show you properly. First, you need to log in to Zimbra as a Zimbra user. Go to Zimbra and run the command as control restart. This will restart all services. All services will stop and then restart. As you can see, all services have stopped and started. Some are still in the process of starting. It's important to restart after installation. Once that's done, let's return to the browser. I'll reload both pages and log into both panels. Let's start with the admin login. Enter the admin credentials and click sign in. The webmail interface of Zimbra 10 is more modern, with an upgraded UI. Check the service status again and click Reload. Now you can see. If you click Reload twice, any issue should be resolved. This happens because the initial update might not have completed. Check back after some time for updates. Keep reloading to see the latest status. These services will show as running. I'll reload again. You can check which services were reinstalled and view their status. The status will show which services are running. Currently, there are no errors, and all services are running properly. Everything is running properly here. You'll see check marks indicating successful operation, and Zimbra 10 will be displayed. Under Manage, you'll see your domain.
We'll cover SSL installation in the next video, so make sure to watch that as well. You can try running the zim status command to check status, and you can restart it once. For DKIM configuration, if it wasn't set up. First, log in as the Zimbra user. Copy and paste this command, replacing your domain name where needed. Press enter, and you'll get the DKIM record. This is the DKIM selector. Go to DNS settings, add a new TXT record. The code is quite long, so copy and paste it carefully. Remove any extra spaces. Make sure it appears in one continuous line without spaces. Remove any extra characters. Copy the final version and paste it in the record, then save. Now that all records are configured, let's send a test email from here to my email address. Send the message and check the received email. When you click on the original message, you'll see SPF pass and DKIM verification. Double check if there are any issues, as sometimes problems can occur due to missing commas. I'll reply to this email with thanks. Click send and check if the reply appears in the inbox. Let me reload the inbox to see if the reply has arrived. Reload again to check for the thanks reply. From the home section, you can view all features. Under monitor, you can see all system details and monitoring information. You can view all Zimbra services and their status here. This is the webmail panel, and it includes Office and only Office integration. When you create a document here, such as clicking on the document option, and save it. The document will open in only Office, providing a complete Office Suite interface. You can edit your documents here in only Office, save them, and print them. This is integrated with Zimbra, which offers many features including contacts, calendar, events, and more that you can utilize. In the next video, we'll cover how to install SSL on Zimbra when using Ubuntu. We'll explain SSL installation in detail in the next video, as this process works for Zimbra 9 or Zimbra 8 as well. That concludes this video. I've shown you how to install the latest version of Zimbra on Ubuntu 20.